Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22. Whoso finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. And right next to that, I have Lisa written down. 72309. She had her breast surgery for cancer. 7610. The bell's palsy. 918. Lisa gone home to be with the Lord. And I tell you, Lisa Hayward was a was a wonderful woman. Lisa Rasol. And God sent me one of her daughters. And it's just remarkable that there she is. And it's funny because she was not saved when we began dating. I was saved. <clears throat> I brought her to the pastor's office because I didn't want her to get saved because of me. I didn't want her to say a prayer. I wanted somebody who knew what they were doing to speak to her. And I remember in the in his office, by the end of the afternoon, she had received the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior in 1991. She was well-liked by everybody. Spoken well, favored of. A good report. Only a few from church would, would gossip against her and me. You know, you might know. But wherever she went, she had and made friends. There's only one person I really don't think she ever trusted. And let me just, I got a little, little video clip I got of her. Oh, that thing. Mommy! I honey pizza! I didn't make her say that. <laughs> you want Subway? I don't care what I want. I'm hungry. Stupid. Come on, Kayla. Kayla, get up! You should go Harry. Oh, that thing. Um, she enjoyed him. She tried to learn the piano. We, we tried to start it. Well, we end up having to try to start a church. And for that, she would keep the house clean. She tried to learn uh, the piano. She, she could play. She was my secretary. She was able to decipher my chicken scratch. And any reports I had, she would type them out for me. She was a great help when I went to seminary school. She wanted me to go to Dr. Ruckman's. PBI in Pensacola, but I fought it. I had stupid reasons, but I can only think of three fights that, that Lisa and I ever got into. And I'll tell you why it was only three, and I'm, I'm serious. She was a praying woman. And there are things in my life that I turned and changed because I honestly believe that she prayed. For her husband. She stood up for her husband when nobody else would. And we'd done many battles with churches. And she was the kind of person I remember in my studies when I found out that Christmas was pagan. I sat down with her and she's like, Christmas is pagan? I said, yes. And I showed her, all right, we're not doing it no more. Not doing it no more. She learned from me. She read her Bible at work. She witnessed at work. She met many people at Electric Bow, where she worked. She met a few missionaries. I remember she met she met this huge guy, brother in the Lord. And when, when she introduced to, I, I forget where we where we met. This guy was big, and he always had a man. His front pocket was just loaded with tracks. And he would, when he bent over, they all fall out. <laughs> and we're picking them up. I, I said, why do you have so many tracks in your pocket? So somebody will help me pick them up, and I give them. I say, here, thank you very much. 
she met and helped encourage a missionary to, uh, with uh, Russia. She was an admin aide for the Seabook program. I worked for Electric Boat, the wet dock pipe shop. And she she and I would handle the same blueprints when she when I when she worked on the, uh, the SSBNs like I worked on. I worked on the SSBN. She later on helped design the Seawolf program and that displeased her very much. And then we actually got to go together and see the Seawolf launched, which very much pleased her. She was a simple, wonderful woman. She was a great wife, great mother. Housekeeper, cleaner, cooker. I help her cook. She cook, I cook. We cook together. She had, uh, in the beginning, before our son was born, before he was conceived, she had non Hopkins cancer, lymphoma. She needed a can uh, not uh, radiation, she needed uh, chemotherapy for that. Then later on, she got into a breast cancer, and she needed multiple uh, chemotherapies and treatments and medications. Lost her hair a couple times with cancer, and that was the most struggle she had in her life. If there's two times I saw Lisa ever get frustrated, one time she, we were in the living room. And she just started pulling her hair out. It was coming out anyway. That just frustrated her so much. And she had, if you see, she's got beautiful hair. She always did. And then I remember a time we were living in Groton. And it was first and second floor. The bathroom and the bedrooms were up in the second floor in the living room. And I was in the kitchen. She was upstairs. And I just remember this agonizing scream. And she come downstairs, she had the, the wad of toilet paper, and there was our son. She had miscarried. And she always said, can we name him Philip? Can we name him Philip? So we got a little boy, Philip, in heaven. She always backed me up. She never, she never gossiped. And she hated the gossipers in the nursery. And she come to me about it. And it really disturbed her that the women were gossiping about other women. She wanted to do nursery, but she didn't want to work around those women. I said, well, speak to the nursery director and see if you can be put like, away from them. She was highly loved by my grandma Pucus, and we go over Fridays. Grandma would allow us to do our laundry. And we'd have, grandma would get a pizza or, or make a meal for us and just... Spend that night in this good family time. Lisa and I were married November 2nd, 1991. She died September 18th, 2010, one month shy of her birthday. She loved us. She loved me. And if you see this picture here, she knew she was dying, but she didn't tell us. And when we had these pictures taken, she just, I want to get some pictures taken of the family. And I learned later from, from her friend at work that she had these pictures because she knew she was going to die and she wanted us to have memories. I didn't need pictures. I, I haven't forgotten Lisa. And we, like I said, we've done great battles with churches, and she stood on my side. She backed me up. With I remember she'd be waiting for me. I'd come home from prison ministry, and she wanted to know who was there, what I taught. She was so interested in me learning the Bible. I remember one time I, I've already begun studying. I, I went to Charity Baptist. Like I said, she wanted me to go. To, she wanted to go down to Dr. Ruckman's. I bought it. I shouldn't have. 
I remember in the middle of my studies, I, I asked her one time. She comes and she kissed me. She see how I was doing. And I asked her. I said, Lisa. I said, I said, what if the Lord called me overseas, a missionary? I, I had no idea where. She told me, she said, I'll go wherever the Lord tells you to go. But I wouldn't go to Pensacola. She stood, she stood firm against her parents because her parents wouldn't believe on Jesus. Her mother, diehard Catholic. After her mother died, and we've been witnessing to her parents, after her mother died, her father came to church one night, and Lisa was down in the nursery of a different church. And Lisa was brought up from the nursery to, to come up into the sanctuary where she would find her dad and her husband up at the altar as Wally would receive the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. Her mom, I believe, was not saved, and she believed that too, but her dad would come to be saved, and he's still living, and we still get along well. She tried witnessing to her friends and her family, and we had multiple ministries together. We would send out gospel tracts through the mail. We would leave gospel tracts. She loved the Lord, and she loved me, and we were happy together. And she was a very hard worker, very reliable person, well-liked by her co-workers. And the way she was in her cancer, she broke her doctors in my heart. Her cancer doctor, there was just a couple times that he'd be in tears. Lisa was just so sweet and innocent. And the doctor spoke to me and how well we were, we were keeping her and encouraging her. And, and Lisa was the kind of person you had, she put things off. You had to push her. And I was pushing her, but not pushing her too much. And through her, she she encouraged, you know, the street ministries in Norwich and the NFA. And then when we started the Occam ministry, she, she was all part of it. And she was with us when she could. Many times she was at work or in the hospital. <coughs> but I know she prayed. And the Lord sent her many sent souls, many saved individuals, and I guarantee there are probably people who got saved from her work. And Lisa and I, we did we'd love to go, we would just go drive around. We'll see what we can find, what we see. But we spent most of our marriage life in a, in the hospital. We had two children born to us. One at Wesley Hospital in Rhode Island. And the other one at L&M in New London, where I was born. And we wanted a tiebreaker. We wanted a child born at Bacchus Hospital where she was born. And we had one girl and one boy. And we wanted to see what the tiebreaker was. Now, Lisa needed help. Her body needed medications to get pregnant. She needed to monitor her, her body and all that. And I don't know how else. But she was able to have, get pregnant, but we had to do, she had to monitor herself and there was medications. And so each of our children were purely wanted. And she's just a doll with, with our son, first time mother, and then our daughter was born. And the thing about my daughter is 
we, we before our children were, were born, we, we pre-named them. We wanted to name our daughter, Ra I wanted to name our daughter Rachel Hannah, but she hated Anna. So it was Rachel Ann. And she was out of it a little longer for the pregnancy, for the delivery. And I was given the paperwork for my daughter to fill out. And I was filling out the information for my daughter. And I'm writing Rachel Ann hyphen or that. And, and then the nurse spoke over me because you better not. She'll kick your butt. Lisa spoke to the nurse about me making sure I didn't do Anna. Lisa knew me. We had cats and dogs we enjoyed. So like I said, we were going to have a third child. We needed to go to the doctor's. For everything to be done and unusual tests began. And we didn't have no idea. But these tests would lead to the fact is that she had breast cancer. And it would be a fight. And there many times I would have to I uh, just hug her and kiss her and I remember when the muscovy surgery to remove of her breast. I remember before that she, she'd be so afraid I was gonna love her. She wasn't gonna be a full woman. I remember in the hospital room after the surgery, I just wrapped my arms around her and kissed her and loved her. She felt safe. She felt love. I felt love. We met by a, a dating magazine. It's funny because <clears throat> I put an ad. It was, it was like a little newspaper kind of thing. I put it out and she answered it. <clears throat> and she had already gone out with one guy before we got answering each other. And she had made a date with him again. But in between those, those two times, she met me. And from the first night, she said she knew. She just said that this style is the one. And remember her telling her mother, who would later on would practically hate my guts. She goes, "I really love Stiley, but I had this date with the other guy. I don't want. I don't want. I want to. Stiley is the one." And her mother said, "Well, just break the date and go with Stiley." And I think her mother probably <laughs> regretted that. So, after she was saved, I asked her to marry me. And she said yes. We had different residences. New London, Groton, Mystic. Norwich. And while she was in the hospital, we were going to lose our house. We just came over our head with the bills and everything. And I had just lost my job at the newspaper. And we were going to go move in with her father. And we go see her in the hospital. Spend much of our time there. I spent, we spent so much time in the hospital, in doctor's offices, and tests. And the doctor wanted her to do radiation, and she didn't want to do it. I guess it would be hard on the table. They would have you to lay on. You have to be perfectly st And it was very uncomfortable from what I was told. 
with the chemos and, and this whole room of people getting chemotherapy. She made friends until you fall, you would fall asleep getting the chemo treatment. She she worked on baby blankets and she talked to people. She talked to people about the Lord and she always praised me. Always spoke about her husband. How those times we would be in ministry. We would be in the street ministry while she was getting chemo. And we had one time, it was the graduation of NFA. And Lisa was in chemotherapy and her doctor was the guest speaker at the, at the high school. And he come walking by us. And he shook my hand. He says, you, you, you. He goes, you're a wonderful husband to that, to that woman of yours. And she's such a wonderful young girl. I mean, her face just lights up the room. And as a family together, how much we love the Lord. That I remember her doctor taking tracks with my daughter. And we had a gospel newspaper, and he just took them. And went to go to the ceremony where he was the guest speaker. I remember I was with her and him in this doctor's office. It was one of the checkups or something. And I remember turning to the doctor and I says, Doc, what is stage four? I mean, how long will it be till she's healed? And he turned in tears and he says, stage four, there's no healing. So we were at the hospital on September 18th. I've gotten, I have gotten two phone calls very early in the morning saying that Lisa had taken the turn for the worse. And I, I, I had no idea what was happening that day. And the second phone call was, the first phone call was, you know, we'll give you, we're going to have her have tests. We'll give you a call again. The second phone call, the doctor says, you need to come down. You need to see her. So we brought the kid. I had no idea what was. And Lisa was just breathing. She was fast breathing. <laughs> Not responsive, couldn't talk, couldn't move. And I tried tickling her, which she didn't like. I tried, tried to do things that irritated her. I wanted to say something. I wanted her to react. And I remember I just trimmed my beard. And she hated kissing me when I had just trimmed my beard. You know, the, the, the hair would be sharp. And I told her, I, I bent over. I said, Lisa, I'm going to give you a big old kiss. I'm going to rub my beard into your face. And I did. I put my arms around her. I put my lips on her lips. And I kissed her. On September 18, 2010, about 1030 in the morning, Lisa met Jesus Christ with my lips upon hers. She died in my arms, kissing her. And Dr. Slater put his arm on my shoulder and said real quick, leaving the room in tears. She was waiting for you to do that. Lisa was more was most like me. We never went into this fooling around of 
of churches and we were we were not almost married to the church but we were baptized at. I'm not going to give names. But we were called into the, we had, we had set a November 2nd wedding date and we were calling the pastor's office saying he's not going to marry us. I said, what? What did we do wrong? What was our sin? We weren't going to the fellowships. We went to church. But we didn't stay for the fellowships. That aggravated her. So we went to a couple fellowships to get married. I still don't want to go to fellowships. And nonsense. And then there was a time I was called to preach, called to go to the ministry. And we were at the church that wasn't going to marry us because we didn't go to fellowships. And she, I, I didn't know what to do. She said, well, let's go talk to the pastors, find out what we need to do with you. And this is before we knew about Ruckman or anything. And we talked to the pastor and a man who never went to seminary, a man that was kicked out of school told me uh, I had to go to seminary. Okay. Go to seminary. So Lisa and I went home. I guess he's going to give us information. I don't know what seminary was. And that night it was we went to church. It was Sunday afternoon we talked. And that night the pastor got up and he says, hey, there's somebody in this church who's being called to preach. And he said, we decide what we're going to do is we're going to send him to school and we're going to pay for it all. And Lisa's just gripping my hand. She's just, man, she was excited. And the pastor said, well, the person being called to preach, we're going to pay for it and mention a man's name who's Joe. I don't know what happened. I have no idea what happened. And that upset Lisa. Lisa said, well, we got to go somewhere else. we got to go find somebody who will help you and get what we need for you to learn. And we went to another church and they helped. And I, I was taking a few classes up in Hartford. And that's where we found out about Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. That's where we you know, found out about his... Uh, PBI in Pensacola, and that's where she wanted me to go. But I was foolish. And when I did, we had, we would have, I think it was monthly, we would have guests, you know, some of the men of the church would get up and do a message. And that pastor of the church started turning on me. Seems like when I started preaching, started teaching the people, the people enjoy it, the people like it, then the pastors would back off. Even Lisa saw that. I guess they were afraid that, you know what, I was liked and the Lord was working with me. She stood by my side, she helped me, whatever I needed, she helped. And before Lisa died, my mom was saved the year before that. And my mom, something was struggling with baptism. She didn't want to do it or something. There was, and Lisa would try to encourage her. Lisa would, I mean, baptism, I mean, baptism can't save, won't save you. And she knew, but I mean, it's that important step of baptism. It's the next step. The Bible says do it. And the Bible says, do it. She do it, Lisa. And she wanted other people to do it. Halloween was wrong and Easter was wrong. Lisa didn't want you to do it. If you were to pass out gospel tracts, she'd get you gospel tracts to do it. This is a woman that, that, that came to a pastor's office before I asked her to marry, marry her. She got saved and her and I got on fire together. She and I, are going to, if I haven't lost any reward, are going to get some great rewards in heaven together as husband and wife. 
So she, the doctor said, well, we'll try radiation, and she didn't want to do it. So it was sound weird, but I, I got her dad. We went to talk to her. I said, I said Lisa, this is death. <laughs> I didn't know she was dying. And I think it was four or five treatments. Four or five, next four or five days. I said, well, listen, I said, will you do it for me and the children? <clears throat> she said she'd do it. And they had to make a special kind of head or mask or something, whatever it was. And we would walk down to the radiation area at Backus Hospital. And there was a little waiting room. And she go in there and would hear her moan and groan. And I remember one time in the waiting room, like the second day that I got down on my knees with the children and, and the, 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 the idiots reception is there. Okay, you can't do that here. You can't pray. Here. We got a chapel. I just said, why don't you just shut up? My wife's in there. She's having a hard time. She's got cancer. Don't you tell me I can't pray. I said, you override the security. I said, you get the cops over here. And we're going to pray. And I'll put a lawsuit with this, school, with this hospital uh, uh, religious. So Lisa got the last day. And they're wheeling her out. I had her by the arm. I said, you did it. You did it. I love you. Good girl. That was a Friday. And then Saturday she would die. The next day. She went through all that and then she died. Because she loved me. She is a wife that stood by her husband with a student. And when I finally, years later, when I graduated and became Dr. Stolle, Hayward, Tracy told me, says, Lisa would have been thrilled. Lisa would have been pleased to know that you are now the doctor. Lisa was, an, was a, a Bible student's wife. She was an evangelist's wife. She was a street preacher's wife. She was a servant and child of God through Jesus Christ, and she did her time. I wasn't the best husband. And being married to Tracy... There's this times where I realized, you know what, I repented a lot of the of the sins of a husband that I did to and against Lisa. And I pray, I wish the Lord will, will give me another one like Lisa. There's only one grudge she ever held against me. And before they moved her from one hospital room to the hospital room she would die in. Right around the corner. As husband and wife, we got things right. We apologized for what we'd done wrong to each other and said our sorries and meant it. Lisa left no bitter grudges, no upsetting when she died. Only I wish she didn't die. And I know that Lisa's going to get a well done. I don't think I would be who I am today if it wasn't for her. 
I know she prayed for me to quit smoking. <clears throat> and she had two scary events with my smoking with me. One time we were walking back to the car somewhere. And I just couldn't breathe and I passed out in the hood of the car. Couldn't breathe. Took me to the doctors. And with Lisa and I at the pulmonary doctor, we sat behind his desk when the doctor told us both, calling us in, he says, Stiley has emphysema from smoking, and he's got six months to live. Because that was the late 1990s. Lisa prayed her way of me giving up drinking, which I had, which I'd done. Lisa prayed, which took a lot of time, but Lisa prayed her way. I, Lord gave me victory over smoking. And he gave me extended life. Lisa introduced me to computers and, and making websites and doing all that I am doing today for the Lord. Internet and computers is because of Lisa. Glory to God in the highest that God saved me and God set me on fire and God set me going and God sent a wonderful help me in my life. I wish he never took her so soon. I pray the Lord for another one like her. And we had some great memories. We got, I got, we got, she's got made for me, which I, which I, I found. We've got CDs and CDs of, of all our photos together. Whosoever finds a wife, finds a good thing, and obtain favor of the Lord. I did, through Lisa, and I'm praying again for not not a carbon copy of Lisa. That'd be impossible. I'm not worthy of another Lisa. Well, I'm praying for another. I will be the, I will be pleased the day when I see Jesus and see Lisa again. <laughs>